Since 1992, the Center for Continuing Education, CCE, has presented seminars featuring the best in topics and talent. Our programs are available in online, DVD, and CD formats. CCE can also customize seminars for your law firm or corporate law department needs. The Center for Continuing Education certifies that this program is approved for one hour of MCLE self-study credit. For information and forms on how to earn participatory MCLE credits with this program, visit www.cce-mcle.com. The Center for Continuing Education is a State Bar of California approved MCLE provider. Just to write it out a bit more. So what we're doing is discounting net profits in the first year plus the discounted net profits in the second year all the way up to net profits in year n. That's all this is. Well, and that's enough. <laughs> So, again, we are summing the loss of net profit, the present value of the loss of net profits from years 1 to n. Well, in business matters, determining n and determining g uh, are a little bit more taxing, a little bit more work, a little bit more care is involved, more time compared to employment cases or personal injury cases. So again, G is the potential annual growth rate of profits, D is the discount rate, N is the number of periods into the future uh, that we are claiming loss of profits. Now how can we compute G? Well, we can use historic growth rates. What were the growth rates of net profits, or revenues even, or earnings, for this particular business? In the, in the past five years, let's say, or 10 years. What if the business didn't have much of a history? Well, we can look at industry level growth rates, historic industry level growth rates. Anyhow, obviously, profits before the incident are used. Profits before tax are generally used. The claim is that effective tax rates for small and medium-sized businesses are rather small. Now, what is the length of the, of the damage period, or n, going back to that equation? Well, that requires a t at least a little bit of thought. We can say there are three general categories. One is open. Again, three general categories of business interruptions or the length of time that the business has been interrupted. One is open, where diminished profits are continuing. Okay? And your expert may need to forecast the end of this period. Okay? There are some statistical techniques that can be employed to determine when the end may occur. But of course, it's at least to some degree speculative, to some degree. Then we can also say that in some cases, the length of the damage period is closed. In other words, it, it has ended. Diminished profits have ended and profits are back to normal. So. This makes it a little bit easier in the calculation of loss of net profits because we have seen that the firm has, in fact, gone back on track and has reclaimed the profits that it once had prior to the incident, prior to the injury. Finally, a third category in terms of length of damage period is infinite, meaning that the business firm has failed. Okay, so we'll get back to that last one later. A complication may arise in your case, 
and your experts should, in my opinion, anticipate this. And that is, uh, if you're a plaintiff, your expert should anticipate from the defense uh, that there will be other causal factors, perhaps, for loss of profits. So we should, no matter what, anticipate this or factor it in, since we're advocates of the truth. We need to factor in, or consider at least, that there are other, or there have been, other causal factors for the loss of net profits. Unfortunately, this adds a complication. And um, this becomes even more important, these other factors for business failure when the firm is small and not so well established. Well, how do you go about breaking down or decomposing the, um, these factors without going into it too, too deeply? We would want to look at the firm's key financial ratios. I gave you, a, oh, maybe two or three moments ago. There will be a whole slew of other financial ratios. Let's say, again, 10 or so. Uh, that your expert could examine prior to the incident, the firm's financial ratios prior to the incident. Okay, again, it's easier to examine the financial ratios of well-established and large firms, but we want to do our best with the small firms and not so well-established firms as well. Try our best in obtaining and examining financial ratios. So again, separating failure from uh, the, due to other causal factors from the wrongful act is somewhat involved. And what are other considerations? Well, examining industry performance as a whole. How has the, this seems obvious, right? It's intuitive. How has the industry as a whole been impacted by these other factors that are claimed as a, a factor to the business failure? How has the whole industry been impacted? We can also look at market shares of the damaged firm over time. Prior to the incident, has the market share, the amount of, or the share of sales of the entire industry by this firm, has it risen before the incident, before the injury, or has it declined? Okay, this just gives us a little bit of well, determination if the firm has been oh, showing a decline in their ability to grow. So again, market shares of the damaged firm over time. What has happened to it? Now, we can also look at the cost structure. What has happened to the costs, various costs of the firm before the, in before the incident and after the incident? And we can look at similar firms that are certainly publicly traded and examine their cost structure because publicly traded firms provide their financial information to the public. So this makes it handy to examine the competitors. If they're publicly traded, it's easy, easier, I should say. Now we can get into models of economic loss. Well. The first model is loss of profits. Economic loss is equal to profits before the incident minus profits after the incident. Okay. And let me just write this on the board too for you. We'll label profits before the incident as P sub B. Pardon me. This is obviously very straightforward. Economic loss is equal to profits before minus profits after the incident or injury, so to speak. 
Now, typically these are net profits, as I mentioned to you before, and net profits are revenues minus all the relevant costs. And generally we're looking at variable costs. We also want to include in our analysis, have, has there been any savings as a result of the injury? Okay, savings meaning what? Any reduction in costs. Because of the incident, a business may, well there's so many uh, hypotheticals that I could bring up, but because of, a, of the incident, a business may take a particular assembly line offline, assembly production system offline. Well, that involves shutting it down, which would reduce the utility bills. It may reduce some of your wage costs and so on. So we want to certainly include the following, and that is because of the incident, we were able to reduce our costs okay, because we were shutting down a store, for instance, or we had to shut down the store for more hours than otherwise because the air conditioning was down for many days, that sort of thing. So that's a very important consideration. Otherwise, if you're a plaintiff and you don't consider this and the defense brings it up, it doesn't look so good, in my humble opinion. Now, what do we use for net profits? Well, you don't want to use net income from the firm's income statement. That's not necessarily useful, usually, in computing economic loss because depreciation and taxes have already been deducted. 